Hi guys, a little walk um, in the woods and um, some nice little specimens here. And these are all organisms you'll know more about very soon. What do we have here a little carpet. What do we have here? All right. Looks a little messy, <laughs> very dense. I wonder what type of organism this is. Very white. <laughs> oh, there's a second one. What's going on? What are those? <laughs> are they wild? <whistles> Hiding. They're really in a rush right now. Here I'm really happy because there's lots of um, lichens on the rocks. You can see them, they look like patches. And by now, you should get an idea of what lichens are. They're actually two different organisms living together. One does photosynthesis and the other one um, benefits from that and also provides um, a structure for the photosynthetic partner. So we have different types of lichens here. Um, folios, crustos, crusticos, whatever. <laughs> and they're actually the only organisms that can degrade rocks. So they're at work right there as they're taking, at least the fungus, minerals from the rock. So lots of them all over which is probably a good sign that the air around here is pretty decent. There's a big patch. Lots of them everywhere. So, what are these shelf fungi doing here? Lots of them. Are they doing photosynthesis on the bark of that tree? How do they feed? Some of them are a little green, so there's maybe some um, algae growing on them, but we know that fungi do not do photosynthesis. They feed off other organisms. So they are feeding on that tree, um, probably degrading the dead wood. And you have to imagine that their hyphae are digging in there to get the, to release the enzymes and get the nutrients. So that tree is covered doesn't mean it's sick or anything. It's actually a pretty big tree and yeah, it's not sick. It's actually dead. There are no more leaves at the top of that tree. <laughs> so these um, fungi are actually in the process of recycling it. That's the decomposition. The uh, they're saprotrophs. See all these words? So next time you go out, you can, in the woods, 
<laughs> you can try and use all those words around your friends. What these are, but they seem very happy here. These are called bird's nests, fungi. They're growing on that wood. Let's zoom on one. A pub quiz. What's, um, what are the common features between this and this? Mm -hmm. What are those? And here we can see some um, aquatic photosynthetic organism. So there are some aquatic plants and they will have roots and they are all underwater. So it's believed that they were on land and then they went back to water because the competition was so um, fierce on land after a while. So some plants went back in water and um, and then you have the algae. The algae can be easily confused with aquatic plants, but they don't have roots. Um, and then, of course, if you can look at a smaller level, they will have other differences um, in their cell walls, um, their cycle as well, um, with um, flagellated sperm cells, since they're adapted to life on, in water. Um, so here I'm not too sure. They look like they're attached and they could be plants. But that could also be um, a carophyte, right? The closest relative of plants, which is a, a green algae and therefore a protist. So it would look like this. Um, multicellular, using the same pigment, so easy to confuse with a plant. With a plant. All right. I'm glad that we got to see those as well. Very nice specimen. You can see all the, ga the gametophytes. And then the female gametophytes have the sporophytes coming out of them. 
So you can see here I'm holding a sporophyte and it's coming from the tip of this gametophyte here and I know then that it's a female gametophyte since it produced the sporophyte here. Since that happens after fertilization of the egg, that's on the female gametophyte. So nice moss specimens here. See how low to the ground they are? There's a dead lo um, a log here, a rock, and that's where they're happy. Whatever works. Here we have two ferns and actually those uh, big ferns that you see are the sporophytes. So in ferns the sporophytes are obvious and they make spores. Um, here, hope you can see that. There, let's focus. So all those brown structures, there's not enough light. But that's where the um, spores are being made and the, those little structured structures called sporangia. So that's underneath the front. So if you look at one side, there's nothing. And then when you turn it over, that's where you get to see all those sporangia, the sori where the sporangia are. So each species of fern will have slightly different shapes of fronds and also the sori will be differently arranged, but the process is the same. If we wanted to observe gametophytes, it would be really hard, but they would be somewhere here, close to the ground, um, and they're not very long lived. So little chances of finding them. Ferns. They are seedless vascular plants, so a lot taller than the moss that we saw. Some species can reach six feet, so that's pretty tall. They look like uh, little trees, but that's basically it. They remain uh, rather soft, like no real trunk uh, of that sort. So that's typical of what you would see here. Um, in the US, if you go in a park, um, in a wood, here there's a, another bunch of ferns that looks like a different species already. The fronts are different. Let's see if they're making spores. Nope, no spores. So probably do it at a different time. Nothing. <laughs> the dogs are calling. Very rare observation of those um, herbivores, I guess, since they're eating grass. I don't know what's going on. Weird wildlife. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, National Geographic might be interested in this uh, footage of uh, vegetarian dogs. Another quiz. So can you list all the similarities between these plants? So just these, right? See that? This like nice little fronds. And these plants. Very small. Let me get another view of those. Um, And actually you can see all these gametophytes and the sporophytes are starting to come out. You can see them, those little longer structures. So they're not mature, but they're popping out already. Here. The sporophytes. 
and the spores are gonna be made at the tip in those little green structures here. So here I stopped because um, you can see up oh, gymnosperm. So see how the leaves are different? They're like needles that allows them to uh, preserve water in the winter. Um, and they're for going to stay with their leaves the whole year, even in the winter. We, most of them are going to do that and they're called evergreen. They will never make flowers. They become pretty tall. They have uh, woody structures, vascular system, and they make huge trees. So there's a taller one right here. Again, we see the needles pretty well. And uh, you can see the rest of it getting pretty high. Tall trees, long-lived trees. So, has this trunk here. So we'll try to find some cones, which are um, their reproductive structures, since they don't make flowers. Everything happens with cones. Um, they have some that are getting formed, since it takes several years to make a cone, and they will usually be formed in between those um, needles. Right now, I can't see anything. So we'll keep on going. <laughs> Gymnosperm, most of them with cones, so we call them conifers. Let's keep going. Not Christmas yet, so we'll leave this little uh, pine tree alone, <laughs> since that's what we're good at, cutting them for Christmas. Here I found a um, a cone on the ground. The tree is pretty high so I wouldn't be able to uh, get close to one on the trees around here. Um, and this is a female cone. It's woody so it's gonna be long-lived. We won't find male cones right now. They come out in the spring and they last a week or two and that's it. They're very soft, they release pollen and they're gone. The females have those woody structures and these are called the scales of the cone. And if you just oops, <laughs> open one, take out the, the scales, usually at the base of the scales, that's where you will find the seeds. This one, I'm not sure it has any, and it's hard to do with the phone in my hand. Ooh, and it has a lot of glue. Yeah, usually if it's intact like that on the ground, it then probably have time to make seeds or squirrels already took them out. Um, the seeds are winged. They have those little uh, structures that allow them to swirl and uh, fall away from the tree they came from. So let's put this back in nature. Um, and we'll see if we can find one that had seeds. Usually, they're, they look very damaged because the squirrels did a number on them like this, um, looking for the seeds to eat them. Nope, no luck. <laughs> we are too late. So hopefully on another hike, we'll get to, um, to find cones with seeds. And those two specimens are following me everywhere. Okay, so I picked up another one and I found seeds. You can see here the soft structures. So these are actually the wings of <clears throat> the seeds. I'm going to try to uh, pull them out.
can pass it in here. Put it under one hand. Okay, we can see those <clears throat> we can see those seeds with the little wing like structure and the seed at the bottom here. So this one and right here. So they're very light in weight, plus they have this um, wing like structure, so when they fall, but they're not sticking to my hand, um, they will spread. So here we go. <laughs> So we have some dispersal going on, um, that's it. So we can't take anything when we're in the park uh, forest. We have to leave everything in the forest. <laughs> Stopping here because finally seeing flowers, even though most of the plants we see around us are angiosperms, they're flowering plants, they're not gonna bear flowers all year long. Uh, making flowers requires energy and um, so it's usually at one time in the year and these plants up here are actually making their flowers now and I don't know if you can see those white structures they are the flowers or groups of flowers together um, they're a bit high to get close but I'll hopefully get close to uh, one of them so I can zoom on the flowers and maybe see seeds. We might be lucky. So let's keep looking, more walking, and uh, let's not stop now. And another wildflower. Is that one cute? Like little wild wild daisies hiding. <laughs> and then nearby a little bush that is ahead in its cycle since it's already making little fruits. You can see them here. So definitely an angiosperm with its fruit. Okay, so here we see more flowers, very small, cute and yellow. Might be related to mustard. <laughs> we would need to look that up. Um, it's a bunch of them. See a grass making flowers. So yes, grasses are <laughs> angiosperms, and if you uh, don't cut them, they make flowers. And here we have a little. Oh, it jumped. It was a grasshopper. Right here. Very nice. Now we could call this the enemy. This is poison ivy. So it's a vine. It usually climbs, but when it's so small, you will just find it on the ground like this. And um, the leaves come usually in threes, like here. See groups of three leaves. And they're not very regular leaves. So if you brush against that, you won't feel anything. Uh, and maybe. Uh, two weeks after you'll have this weird rash very itchy it's actually blisters forming and um, oozing 
and it's spreading all over and you might wonder what is going on it's actually because you touch the, the plant and it has this molecule this in the in the sap a little bit everywhere on it and in it that will cause what they call a delayed um, hypersensitivity reaction so it's really annoying um, only time will really do something about it and maybe some allergy medication but um, it's just better to do what it looks like and never get in contact with it poison ivy I found these and I really don't know what they are um, they look like fruits um, but they have those scales just like cones so I'll check it out they're pretty interesting though see how this one has like those scales coming off and these might be seeds with a, a wing like structure so I'll look it up and uh, we'll know soon what this belongs to Angiosperm or gymnosperm? <laughs>